What's up guys, this is Matthew Burns, and welcome to your very first tutorial on how to build an 8-bit computer entirely from scratch. Well, not entirely from scratch. I don't think anybody would be interested in building each individual logic gate with diodes or transistors, but we will be building the entire thing from the memory, uh, to registers, to the ALU, to the program counter, the whole thing out of individual logic gates. Now, as you can imagine, it's not going to be like your desktop computer that you're viewing this on now, but it will be kind of neat. It'll be able to run through some basic programs and perform simple functions, and uh, hopefully we'll both learn something along the way. Uh, before I get started, there's one thing I would like to mention. If you haven't already, I highly recommend watching my tutorial series on digital electronics, because if you haven't, this uh, is going to be very difficult to follow along with and very confusing. But if you're daring enough to just jump right in or you do have uh, prior knowledge in digital electronics, feel free to just watch this anyway. Um, that's about it, so I guess we can now begin. What we're going to be working on today is the ALU, or Arithmetic Logic Unit. The purpose of the arithmetic logic unit is to perform the mathematical operations of the computer. So uh, how we're going to accomplish this is through something called a binary adder. There are two types of adders we're going to be focusing on in this tutorial, although we're only going to be using one. We're going to be using the full adder, but I will go through the half adder and the full adder. The purpose of, well, let's start with the half adder. The purpose of a half adder is to add one bit of binary to another and it'll give you a two-bit output. It'll give you the sum and the carryout. Although the sum is only one bit, it's considered a two-bit output because the carryout is the second bit. So I'll show you what this looks like on paper and uh, hopefully it'll make sense. So with the half adder, you have two inputs, your A input and your B input and you also have a sum and a carryout. Now how this works is it adds A to B and then it gives you your sum and your carryout. It's that simple. So let's run through some uh, simple addition, binary addition problems. So let's say A is 1 and B is 0. Uh, what's going to happen is because, well 1 plus 0 is 1, you're not going to have a carryout because it can stay in the same place. Your sum is going to be 1, and your carryout is going to be 0. So what this would look like is 1 plus 0 is 1 with a carryout of 0, so it's 1. Let's say we were to add 1 plus 1. What this would look like is 1 plus 1 is 0 with a carryout of 1 for binary 2. And that is how the half adder works. Now the full adder has a third input that's added the exact same way A and B are added. They're all added together. It's called the carry in. So a full adder is going to look like this. It's going to have A and B, the same as the half adder. It's going to have the sum it's going to have the carry out, but in addition to this, it's also going to have a carry in. And uh, the carry in, like I mentioned before, is added just like A and B. So let's run through a single problem. Let's say you have 1 for A, 0 for B, and 1 for the carry in. Now 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 0 with a carry out of 1. Now, uh, if this doesn't make sense, um, let me try and explain it this way. Uh, imagine you're adding in decimal. 5 plus 5. Your answer should be 10, right? Well, it is, obviously. Um, but how this works is 5 plus 5 has a sum of 0 and a carry out or carry over of 1. And that's how you get 10. That's kind of what we're doing here with the carry out. Now, um, how these binary adders work is you string the carryout of one to the carry-in of the other. So, let's say you have a half adder here.
and you have, sorry about that, and you have the sum, and you have the carry out of this go to the carry in of this. So you have a half adder hooked up to a full adder. Um, let's say you're adding 0, 1 to 1, 1. What, what you're out, well let's, let's actually run through uh, mathematics of this. 0, 1 plus 1, 1. Well, 1 and 1 is going to give you a 0 with a carryover of 1. 1 and 1 is going to give you a 0 with a carryover of 1. So that's binary 4. And does this make sense? Well, yeah, because that is binary 1. 0, 1 is binary 1. And 1, 1 is binary 3. So 1 plus 3 is 4. Now, uh, so I don't run out of time here, let's uh, get to the truth tables. I'll draw that out too. So the half adder looks like this. It has one exclusive OR gate. Sorry for my drawings, I know they're pretty bad. And it has one AND gate. And the output of the AND gate is your carry out. And the output of the exclusive OR gate is your sum. Now, how this is hooked up is the. Uh, a input of the exclusive OR gate is hooked up to the A input or first input of the AND gate, and then the B input of the exclusive OR gate is hooked up to the B input of the AND gate. And then this is your A input and this is your B input. So let's run through, this one's fairly simple so we could run through the entire truth table. We have A, B, carry out, and sum. Let's run through the possible combinations, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. 0, 0 is kind of obvious. If you add 0 to 0, you're not going to get anything for a sum or an output. Sum or carry out, excuse me. Um, now when you add 0 and 1, 0 plus 1 is 1, so your sum is going to be 1, and you're not going to have anything for your carry out. And whether you add 1 to 0 or 0 to 1, it's the same thing. But when you add 1 to 1, you're not going to get a sum, but you will get a carry out. Now let's see how this works. The exclusive OR gate uh, has an output high when one or the other input is high, not both. The AND gate allows the output to be high only when both inputs are high. So let's say we add 0, 0 to A and B. We're not going to get an output out of the exclusive OR gate, and we're not going to get an output from the carry out. So that's what we expected. Now, um, let's say we add 1, 0 to 1 to A and 0 to B. Uh, we are going to get a sum because the exclusive OR gate has only one input high, but we're not going to get a carry out, which is what we expected over here. We have 1 for a sum and 0 for a carry out. And uh, now let's go through 1, 1. If we add 1 to A and 1 to B, the exclusive OR gate does not have an output because both are high but the carry out does, so that's what we expected. One for a carry out, zero for the sum. Now, the diagram for the full adder is a little bit more involved, but I'd like to get through that in this tutorial. The first part is similar. Well, once we start wiring the different logic gates together, you'll see. So you have two exclusive OR gates. You have two AND gates. And this one's new, at least for this tutorial. We have an OR gate. The OR gate allows the output to be high as long as one or the other input is high. Not only, but as long. So if both inputs are high, the OR gate will have an output. Now, uh, just like with the half adder, the A input of the first exclusive OR gate is hooked up to the A input or first input of this AND gate and the second input of this exclusive OR gate is hooked up to the second input of this AND gate, and those are A and B, respectively. 
Now the output of this exclusive OR gate goes to the input of this exclusive OR gate, or one of the inputs, and that connects to the A input of this AND gate. Now this is where the carry-in comes in. This is the only difference between the half adder and the full adder. Uh, you connect the second input of this exclusive OR gate to the second input of this AND gate, and that is your carry-in. That is added with A and B, as if it is one of the inputs, because it is. Um, the output of this exclusive OR gate is your sum, and the output of these AND gates goes to the input of this OR gate, and that is your carry-out. So, I would like to run through some truth tables for this. Uh, we're not going to go through all of them because there are a lot more combinations. I will write all those down here. If you're interested in going through them, feel free. Uh, I guess the more you practice, the better you'll be at this. So, your carry out and your sum. Possible combinations are 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. So if we apply, we're going to go through 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. This is confusing with the dashed line, sorry about that. Um, we're going to go through 0, 1, 1, and 1, 1, 1. So we add 0, 0, and 0 to these inputs. Uh, with both of these inputs at 0, there is no output, because not one or the other is high. So you get a 0 for the output of that exclusive OR gate. With 0 and 0 going to this AND gate, the output is also 0. Uh, the carry-in is 0, because we're adding 0 plus 0 plus 0. So if the carry-in is 0, the input to this is 0, and the input to this is 0, the, this exclusive OR gate has no high input, so the sum, or the output of that exclusive OR gate is 0. Uh, if we have 0 going to this AND gate here, and here, it has no output, so this is 0, and so since neither, or neither one or the other is high, and not both are high, this OR gate has a carryout of 0. So 0, 0, 0 gives us an output of carryout 0, sum 0. 0 plus 0 plus 1, we'll have 1 for the carry-in, will result in this. We still have a 0 at the output of this exclusive OR gate. We still have a 0 at the output of this AND gate. Um, but with a 1 here, I know that's kind of tough to read, with a 1 there, this is a 1. So there is an output here for the sum, but this is still a 0 because you have a z the AND gate still a 0 because you have a 0 and 1 going to it, so your carry out is 0. So our sum will be 1, and our carry out will be 0. Um, now with 0, 1, 1, we will, because one of the inputs of this exclusive OR gate is high, we will have the output of this exclusive OR gate high. And with 1 and 1 going to this exclusive OR gate, the sum will be 0, because not only one or the other, but both are high. Now, we have 1 and 1 going to this AND gate. Yeah, that's correct. So, the output of this AND gate will be a 1. But we have 0 and 1 going to this AND gate, so that output will be a 0, but since 1, as long as 1 of the inputs to this OR gate is high, the output will be 1, so we'll have a carry out of 1. I know that's tough to read, it's kind of off the screen, sorry about that. Carry out is 1, sum is 0. I'd like to go through one more, well, actually we're running out of time, but if you'd like to go through the rest of these, we can, or you can on your own time. Um, now, how we're going to construct this, which we'll begin in the next episode, is we'll string the carryout of one full adder to the next. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.